Namaste. Namaste. Welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. And today we're going to be doing a video, The Understated Wisdom of Sushant Singh Rajput. Um, we've done some of his uh, movies and we've done some trailers by him. We did recently like the home tour um, yeah. and we've done, we know the sad news um, about his passing and it just breaks our heart. Our heart goes out to his family, um, fans, friends, everybody um, has been deeply affected by this. Um, we've also done some stuff on Kangana's voice in the matter. Yeah. A little bit about the Bollywood mafia that goes on and um, how it may have contributed a lot to his demise. Um, this is him speaking at a college, so we're interested to hear. Um, we know he was a really smart guy. Yeah. Could have gone to Stanford, um, wanted to do astronomy and be an astronaut, and then decided to be an actor. And um, so we're going to listen to him in his own words. So excuse me if I falter. Excuse me if I don't make sense. Excuse me if I get a panic attack right now. <laughs> but I'll try my best. We love you anyway! <laughs> that was a lovely introduction. Thank you so much for that. I have this habit of carrying chips in colleges, so... <laughs> I became an actor because I had a problem. I was an introvert. You know, I'm, I'm the youngest in my family, and I was so pampered in, in uh, my house that when I used to step out, I uh, didn't know how to deal with people. So I, I gradually I became this very shy introvert kid who could not talk. Well, I still cannot talk. And uh, I have this stage right? So what I do generally as an actor is I hide behind all these fascinating characters and uh, then I'm confident. But uh, like right now, as I'm not acting, so there are problems that I'll screw it up. Uh, so excuse me if I falter. Excuse me if I don't make sense. Excuse me if I get a panic attack right now. <laughs> but I'll try my best. We love you anyway. All right, I would love to share my journey with you, my learnings, and in case you decide to drop out and uh, join me in Bollywood, it will come very handy. <laughs> so, uh, I was thinking in the car, what do I talk about? What can I tell you that you already don't know? I'm assuming, and I think most probably, you guys are way much more smarter, and uh, better than what I was when I was your age. But after deep thinking, I, I, I zeroed down into two things that I can actually discuss about. These two things talk about chasing your dreams and actually living your dreams, which unfortunately nobody mentioned to me when I was starting out. And those two things are, can I write down? Can you see the boards? I always wanted to do this in front of uh, professors, so I just... <laughs> so those two things are the biggest lie and the only truth about success that I was told about. Now the biggest lie was money plus recognition is equal to happiness, is equal to success. So let me begin by mentioning that I come from a very um, middle class family. And when I was growing up, money was a big, big, big differentiator in my life. Also in uh, the three generations of my family that I know of, that are documented, nobody knew what fame uh, felt like. So basically, uh, both uh, money and recognition were missing when I started out. So I already started out as a failure. Let me be very precise. My family told me that I had to become an engineer 
medicals were booked for my sisters. Uh, yeah. So once I'm an engineer, then I can, uh, you know, try a civil services examination and then probably, yeah, that will be like opening the doors for all kind of happiness and I'll be forever successful, I'll be forever happy. This is the condition that I experienced when I was growing up. Alright, fair enough, good deal, so I became very good in studies, did fairly well in my 10th board exams. And then off I went to Delhi for my plus two, got myself enrolled in a nice school, and uh, with them and and Fiji and half a dozen of uh, uh, other coaching institutes. And uh, I used to share my room with three other similar aspirants. What it meant was, every day after finishing my assignments, school assignments, and preparing for my engineering entrance exam, I had to wash my clothes and I had to cook food for myself. But I wasn't complaining. Well, it was worth it because after all, I was, for the very first time in my life, I was so close to become successful for the first time in my life. So yeah, finally I slogged, I got selected for several engineering colleges and I decided to take a mission in Delhi College of Engineering, which is... Easy. Now known as DTU, thank you. Oh, were you my senior or junior? <laughs> uh, there was a celebration like this in my family too. <laughs> I could finally stop for a while and breathe, you know. I was telling myself that, you know what? Now you have made it. You should be happy because you are supposed to be happy. But it wasn't working that much. Something was missing. There was a void that I could feel. So I, I thought maybe something bigger was required. For some reason, for some reason incessantly, while uh, the first 18, 19 years of my life, the future me was much happier, much successful than the present me. So I was like, all right, fine. So I was forcing myself. I promised, uh, as I promised, I started preparing for civil services examination. And I was forcing myself to slog, uh, but I was bored. UBS, UBSC exams were still far away. In the meantime, I thought of doing theatre and uh, I thought to learn dance because uh, to counter the, the um, shyness that I had, still have, and also because there were no girls in my engineering college for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I felt cheated, man. We slog so much, you cry in the entrance exam and you find that there are no girls. So, yeah, so somebody told me that there are very uh, good looking girls in dance uh, schools. So I was like, fine, I go there. <laughs> and uh, once I started with performing arts, I knew one thing for sure. I knew that I quite liked it. And three years later, imagine me sitting in the campus, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm really interested in performing arts. And all I want to do is to earn money and to be recognized. So if I become a movie star, <laughs> hmm, I actually was very serious, and I dropped out, oh my gosh, in the third year, when I was just two semesters away from getting the degree. Engineering degree. Came to Mumbai, got heavily into theatre and also other skills that I thought were necessary to become an actor. And uh, by the way, this time I stayed with six other guys in a single room kitchen. But this time I was prepared for it. This time there was one difference. I was driven. My self-respect was at stake. <laughs> My ex-college mates, one of them is sitting right here in my shirt, uh, they thought that I was that disaster that folks in engineering and B schools should never become. So I had to prove a point to everybody. I had to prove a point to my family. Most importantly, I had to prove a point to myself. And this was the time when I was also a background dancer. So I was dancing behind all the possible stars that you can think of, Shah Rukh Khan, Shahid Kapoor, everybody. And I was thinking, I was thinking to myself while I was performing, okay, it's just three steps away, there, I have to get. And uh, everything will be sorted. And I kept going like that. And two years later, guess what? I got myself my first big break. 
I was selected for a prime time show on a TV. Now hear me out, it was a seriously a big break because I started earning. People started recognizing me. To be honest, I would deliberately go and roam in all these malls so that people could look at me, smile, ask for my photo. And I was watching myself on TV for the first time. You have no idea how it feels for somebody like me to, uh, you know, I was looking at me for, and I was looking at myself every day on TV. It was a big, big, big high. I also suddenly discovered that I actually had many friends who were like, well, absent all this while, but suddenly they popped up. <laughs> and uh, the show became popular. I was making good money to a point that money stopped being a differentiator in my life. And I was becoming more and more popular. Now I cannot go to all those malls that I was going all alone. So I wanted somebody to be with me to save me. I bought myself my first dream house. I bought myself my dream car. And just a note to you as well. <laughs> I was getting such female attention that my engineering college friends could only possibly dream of. <laughs> so I was having a time of my life. And then something unusual happened. I got used to everything. And I felt cheated. I stayed with all these dreams for 10 and 15 years of my life. I was promised happiness and I was promised success. But all these things stayed with me just for a few days. And I'm punctuating me because I started from zero money and zero recognition. So I was not happy. How can that it be? I didn't like this version of success. And the future me again was luring the present me. But this time, I decided otherwise. I would do something else. I, so that gets us to the second point, which is the only truth. Uh, I won't take too much time, I'll just try to keep it short. I figured something. I figured that something seemingly big things were not that big once I got them. And looking back in the past, I realized that maybe smaller things were way bigger. And there was one thing that was missing in my life that was the cause of this illusion. And that thing that was missing was now. I was, all these years, just, I was obsessed about what's gonna happen. I used to draw those flowcharts that we are, uh, we are taught in schools. That if this happens, I'll do that, and uh, six months from now, I'll be here. So I wanted to be in control. I was so obsessed about my future, I was taking the entire responsibility about the past, but all I was doing was frequently swinging from past to future, not living in actual sense. Well, <clears throat> I also figured that when I perform on stage or in front of camera, I'm so much excited. I am so much interested. I was paying so much attention that there was no room to think about future or the past. I was just there in the moment. I was alive in true sense when I was performing. And for the first time, trust me, in a long time, I understood the true meaning of success, which was not money plus recognition, but it was now plus excitement. This realization happened in 2011 and it has been five years. 
Now let me share another very short uh, story with you. When I was in school, 4 to 5.30 p.m. was the time when I was allowed to go out and play. I was asked to be an engineer, but the entire day I, was, I used to wait for 4 p.m. to happen. I would step out and the next one and a half hours felt like five minutes. <laughs> I didn't understand uh, this then, but now very honestly, very confidently, I can tell you this, that I am living that 4 to 5.30 life right now since last couple years. <laughs> Cause and effects are, no, are, are not different. Excitement is the cause, excitement is the effect. I get hired again and again because all these success mantras that we talk about, you know, hard work, belief, focus, vision, risk taking, talent, perseverance, we can go on and on. But all these success mantras are now the side effects of the process itself. I'm so engaged, I'm so, it commands my attention so much that there is nothing else that I can think about. So hard work doesn't feel, feels like hard work. And there's nothing else that you can do but to uh, persist. Talent you will cultivate, vision you will get, focus there is no other way because it's, 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 it's commanding your attention so much. So, here I am right now, five years uh, down the line. Money and fame, although still could not earn back their reputation in my life. But let me show you one thing. I have much more of them than I had ever planned. And the best thing, uh, my college, uh, one of the professors was very dear to me, called me recently uh, about uh, asking me to plan this interaction with students and I very humbly requested that can I get my degree back. <laughs> and, and it's, uh, uh, it's happening and I'm very excited again. Thank you so much. Guys. For somebody who considers himself an introvert, and not a good speaker. He he's really is good. really good. He's funny. He's natural. Like he, you can tell he's just kind of a down to earth kind of guy, which makes all of this whole situation break our hearts even more. He found the reason for living. Like yeah. which he found, you know, money and fame doesn't equal happiness, and no. trying to do goals that aren't maybe your own like set yourself for goals that are higher and higher and right higher. or even when he set his goals to be like an actor and he was gonna do this this and this you he forgot to live in the moment yeah enjoy the moment be who you are now you know what you did in the past is gone you can't change that can't change the past but what you do in the moment you know, will affect your future. Like you said, as a kid, you know, I enjoyed that hour and a half that was my time to do anything I wanted. But it felt like five happy. minutes. <laughs> Always we, feels like five minutes. When you have fun, it goes by fast. Mm -hmm. Time goes by so fast. That's how he was feeling every day. That's how he was living. Yeah. But it took him a long time to get there. And I feel like there's people now that don't have the wisdom he has that he figured it out. You know, money doesn't equal happiness. Fame doesn't equal happiness. Friends come from all over. The people that are there for you when you don't have any money, that will pick you up when you're hurt, um, are your real friends. Yeah. So breaks my heart to know that he got into a position where people didn't recognize him and he forgot what he had learned from this forgot who he is. He forgot who he was and how much he, his mom told him how good he was. Um, something happened in these last four years that he forgot all that he had learned when he made the speech because this was an amazing, amazing speech. Yeah. Um, what I got from this was like, 
like you said before, money doesn't solve everything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of grown-ups will tell kids, basically, is, like, get a job with good money or, like, have a good education. Like, don't become something like an actor or a singer because that won't get you anything. So it's... And then the kid usually has this mindset, like, you have to do better. You have to get into a good education. You have to do college. Like, Mm -hmm. you can't be these, like, lower things. And so, but if no one does it, then who will be that one singer on TV? Who will be the actors that give you this stuff? Right. We have a lot of great actors, him and singers. Him being one of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of wonderful music. So it's always, like, you have to choose your own life. Like, money does not solve everything. No. Sometimes it makes life a little bit easier if you have money for food and a place to live. Um, But, yeah, it's not going to buy you happiness. It's not going to solve everything. Mm -mm. It's not going to get you friends. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But, like, we want you to do good in school. We want you to get a good education so you can get a good job. Um, You know, trying to keep the job options open to stuff that you enjoy yeah because I think that's part of it um if you enjoy what you do and you enjoy going to work then every it's day, not really work that's what he was saying like he once he realized to live in the moment and to put all his efforts into now um and not worry about anything else like he you know his acting was his hour and a half of playtime outside that he enjoyed every minute of it was his life yeah yeah which mm, breaks my heart to know that something happened but everybody has some fault in this we feel bad that we didn't do enough of his movies we've seen ms stoney's amazing movie tachori is an amazing movie um you know there's been a few others that we've done trailers and songs from we personally feel like we didn't do enough. Um, Kangana is going after like hitting them hard, but as consumers, if you don't watch these big um, mafia people, if you don't watch their movies, they're eventually going to be flops and not just one flop. Like if you're not watching any of their movies, not going to their YouTube channels, you're not watching any of their stuff. Eventually there's going to be no money. Um, and they'll get a clue. You can't treat people like crap. This is my personal take on it. You're stuck inside with the virus for two months um, alone. And then he has reports after reports after reports of people not saying nice things of movies All being these called people coming flops. after him. Pe- yeah, people coming after him, not getting a lot of things. Um, his movie's not getting a lot of recognition. And, you know, for him to be tweeting, like, please watch my movies or I'm not going to have a job anymore, he was in desperation. Yeah. And not enough people heard it and he didn't have support. So watch some of these younger guys. Watch some of the... The new generation. Yeah. These younger people, the people that are... Sonu Sood. Yeah, thank you. That's the name I was in my head. Sonu Sood. Like, he's doing such amazing work outside of acting for people for migrants for he's been doing so much amazing work and he is not a big hero in the movies and he should be and he should be or he should be in politics because he's doing an amazing job but i think whatever sonu su does after this virus is over everybody needs to behind him and support him either watching every single movie that he's in or, um, you know, supporting him if, him if he wants to do politics or government or anything. Anything he decides to do. He needs the backing of the people because he does stuff for the people. Yeah. And I know Sushant has done, given money um, for different organizations. He's stopped and let people take pictures of him that were beggars on the street. Like, we've seen a lot of stuff from him, too. And, um, like we said, don't let this happen again. Let's let what we can control our wallets just like with china what we can yeah. control with our wallets and what we watch this you need to help these up and coming actors and the ones that don't get the recognition and don't listen to all the stuff that comes out of bollywood yeah. so i hope you guys enjoyed watching this he 
was an amazing person. Yeah. This was an amazing speech. Thank you guys for sending this to us. Don't forget to subscribe. And join our wonderful growing Jan family. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.